There's a symmetrical triangle pattern building on the S&P 500 futures daily chart. Which way will prices break out of this pattern? So the rule of thumb is that normally prices break out of a congestion pattern in the same direction that they came into that pattern, which of course was to the upside. And that's about 60 to 65% of the time. So with that in mind, I think that we will probably see a breakout to the upside in the stock index features, not just the S&P, but the other main indices as well. What are the main fundamentals impacting the price direction of the U.S. dollar? So usually it's interest rate differential expectations that dominate as far as the direction of currencies. But right now, I think the dominant influence is the political uncertainties in Washington. And I think that is enough right now to cause the dollar index to trend lower. So additional weakness is likely. We're under some pressure today. So I think more of the same is in store. Lower prices for the dollar, I think, are coming. There is a double bottom on the December 30-year Treasury Bond Futures Daily Chart at the 173.10-173.11 level. Will this support hold, or will it be taken out? So there is an old axiom that double bottoms seldom hold, and I think that will be the case again this time. And it does appear that there is some economic recovery globally, even though it does appear to be uneven. So I would expect the double bottom that we are seeing in the 30-year bonds to be taken out, and there probably will be some follow-through as well. So lower prices seem in store for the long end of the curve. The short end will probably hold up, but it's the 30-year bonds that I'm most worried about, and I think lower prices are coming for the 30-year Treasury bond futures. Soybean futures are near $11, corn $4, and Chicago wheat $6. Why? Will prices continue to trade higher? Soybean futures are near $11, corn $4, and Chicago wheat $6. This is because of a combination of a couple of things. Number one, uh, USDA dropping the U.S. corn and soybean crop numbers, uh, tightening the carryout, China coming in and buying maybe more corn and soybeans from the U.S. than what the USDA has got plugged into their balance sheet, and dry weather in Russia, uh, and dry weather here in the U.S. Plains. Will prices uh, continue to trade higher? I think so. I mean, I think that we need to put a premium on the marketplace. Uh, we need perfect weather in South America from here on out. And we need bigger acres here in the U.S. Uh, in 2021. And we need big yields to satisfy not only the demand, but also to loosen up the balance sheets. What is the latest net managed fund position in grain and oilseed futures? The funds are long over 220,000 contracts of beans, 200,000 contracts of corn, almost 90,000 contracts of meal, 90,000 contracts of soybean oil, and almost 50,000 contracts of Chicago wheat. This is close to a record long combined position in the grains and oilseeds. Uh, the, technically, the market seems to be a little bit overbought, but I think the funds are, are looking at the weather situations, the tightening of the U.S. balance sheet as a harbinger of maybe higher prices down the road. Again, these managed funds have made money in, in the last 60 days. As we analysts, uh, we're trying to fight this rally um, because it, uh, of unknown China buying and because of the weather situations globally. What is the latest concerning global weather and the potential impact on 2021 crops? As far as global weather is concerned, I think the number one thing is that it could be a La Nina year. And in La Nina years, uh, it's usually pretty dry in Argentina and southern Brazil. It could be dry across the southern one-third of the U.S. And we have a persistent pattern that keeps dry conditions uh, the norm right now in parts of Russia and even the Ukraine. And so for winter wheat seedings in the U.S. and for Russia, they've been delayed and farmers are, are planting some of the crop in dust. As far as South America is concerned, it looks like Brazil by the 1st of November will start getting into their normal rainy season. But the delay there could add to demand for U.S. soybean exports. And Argentina, down the road, in a line of year is supposed to be dry. So we'll see if that tightens global 
2021 balance sheets and keep prices firm.